100. Max thrust, flaps 9. Max thrust, flaps 9. Positive rate. Gear up. We're just off Corpus Christi, and we've already started our arrival into Houston. We still have 180 miles to go before we reach our destination, and we haven't even been assigned our crew's altitude yet. But we'll be back on the ground in less than 40 minutes, and we'll fly this entire flight on an arrival procedure. No matter what you fly, you'll learn about standard terminal arrival procedures during your instrument training, but most pilots won't actually fly an arrival until they're in something that burns Jet A, or at least until you're near the flight levels. Arrival procedures streamline inbound IFR traffic into defined routes, and you can join an arrival procedure well before you start your descent. In fact, on this trip with ExpressJet, we haven't even been cleared to our cruise altitude yet, and we're already on the Tejas arrival into Houston. Arrivals usually start with a transition, and R starts at the Corpus Christi VOR, and then it leads to an arrival fix. But the Tejas arrival also routes traffic from other areas to the west, like San Antonio. Eventually, all these transition routes merge, and the aircraft join the same route. On the Tejas arrival, that happens at G-Man. So an arrival helps center and approach control organize traffic flowing into a terminal area. And you don't have to fly a jet to fly an arrival. In the Cirrus, ATC usually assigns one when we return to the Denver area. ATC organizes arriving traffic in three dimensions. They're managing altitude and lateral path and airspeed to keep traffic separated. And arrivals help with all three. Let's look at altitude. There are two ways to descend on an arrival procedure. Either ATC can assign specific altitudes stepping you down along the route, or they can clear you to descend via the arrival. In the Cirrus, ATC usually steps us down, giving us altitudes to maintain, which allows ATC to space us above or below other traffic on the arrival. And they do that because we're slow. Even though I think we're fast, the Cirrus is still a lot slower than other traffic on the procedure. And that's because turbines or turboprops make up most of the traffic on many arrivals. When we're approaching powder on the Powder 8 arrival into Denver, we're flying around 135 knots indicated. And jet traffic's crossing at 250 knots indicated. So, yeah, we're in their way. If you can keep up with the traffic flow, ATC will often clear you to descend via the arrival. And that allows you to descend to each minimum altitude on the procedure. But it also requires you to meet every altitude crossing restriction. Arrival procedures can also help ATC sequence aircraft by controlling their speed. They often have maximum and mandatory speeds, keeping traffic moving at the same rate. So on the Tejas arrival into Houston, the traffic slows to maintain 280 knots and then eventually slows to maintain 210 knots indicated. Those speeds are still too fast for a piston, and the Tejas arrival can only be flown by turbine and turboprop aircraft. In fact, many of the RNAV-based arrival procedures are restricted to turbines and turboprops. So when you're cleared for an arrival, you're following a lateral path and managing your power to meet speed restrictions. And if you're cleared to descend via the arrival, you're managing your altitude to hit each crossing restriction. But slowing down while descending can cause some problems, especially for jets. And it's really tough in a regional jet. Jets are slippery, they don't generate much drag and leading edge slats, flaps, and spoilers all can help. But flaps and spoilers generate a lot of turbulent airflow, so they're loud and they shake. Everyone in the plane knows that they're down. Slats are much better, but the Embraer 145 we're flying today doesn't have slats, and neither does a CRJ200, so you might need to level out on the arrival briefly to slow down, and that takes planning. So we'll jump into the Tejas arrival as we get our descend via clearance, leaving the Alvin fix. AC-9115, descend via the Tejas 3 arrival. Humble altimeter is 3046. Okay, descend on the Tejas, 9115. There it is, as expected. The arrival's programmed into the flight management system, with the vertical deviation display guiding our descent down. The ERJ's autopilot can't follow this FMS vertical path directly, so the crew sets vertical speed mode on the autopilot, and then they dial a descent rate to keep us on path and they'll manually set their thrust levers to control their airspeed. As we reach CAT, we need to cross at or above flight level 190, and we cross at flight level 200, holding 300 knots indicated airspeed. Our next fix, G-Man, is 8 miles away. We need to cross between flight level 190 and 16,000, 
and we need to slow and maintain 280 knots indicated. We only need to lose 1,000 feet, so we can do that and slow down. But if we were higher, we may need to dip down below the vertical path indicator, meet our altitude restriction before G-Man, level out, and then slow down. It's a much smoother alternative to deploying spoilers. That 280 knot speed requirement means that every aircraft flying on this arrival is flying the exact same speed when they reach this point. We're all at the same altitude. So if we weren't at the same speed, we'd catch up to each other and there'd be problems. We crossed G-Man at 17,800, right at 280 knots. Every fix on our way to Howland has an altitude restriction, and we're following the vertical path indicator down. As we cross city, we're at 15,600, meeting the 16,000 feet or below restriction, and we're slowing from 280 knots, getting ready for the 250 knot mandatory speed at Tejas. We cross Tejas at the bottom of our altitude block at 12,300, right at 250 knots. And the rest of our flight is smooth as we make our way into Howland. From Howland, we follow the transition for runway 27. We'll stay at 6,000 until ATC clears us lower, flying to Shiv, Smoker, and then on to Prey. As we cross Shiv, ATC starts setting us up for the visual approach. AC 9115, reduce speed to 210. 210 on the speed, 9115. AC 9115, descending 18, 3,000. 3,000, 9115. 3,000, set. Set. We're slowing to 210 knots, descending from 6,000 for 3,000. And as we reach prey, ATC turns us north for the visual. AC 9115, turn left heading 360. 360, 9115. AC 9115, do you send to maintain 2,000? Just advise when you have a field. You got it. 2,000, fields inside, 9115. AC 9115, clear visual approach, runway 27. Okay, clear for the viz, 9115. Okay, arm it up for me, set miss for me. Gear down. Gear. Flaps, 22. 22, speed checks. Tower 9115 with you on the visual for 27. AC 9115, Houston Tower, wind 1407, runway 27, clear to land. Clear to land, 9115. The visual approach is a subject for another video, but you can see how the arrival set us up to land. It's amazing how little we heard from ATC. I mean, no altitude changes, no headings, no traffic issues, especially considering how many aircraft are converging on Houston Intercontinental. But that's what arrivals are good at. They take hundreds of aircraft, line them up, and funnel them in to a runway. 